Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Ray's Garage. I'm Ray Cornelia, and this is part two of the Creality Ender 3 3D printer. In part one's time lapse video, you saw the unboxing assembly of the Ender 3 printer. The printer came with a tool kit and everything you needed to assemble it. In real time, under 45 minutes, I was done. It came with everything to get up and printing, except for one thing. You saw it came with a European plug. So right off the bat, I had to run out and get a uh, 110 volt printer style plug. And also I had to make a change to the power supply. It's got a, a toggle switch on the back, which switches from 230 to 110 volts. So after the assembly, I had no idea where to start. And after I posted part one, my buddy Greg Halligan, 142 Halligan's Workshop, he steered me in the right direction right off the bat. Greg, thank you. I appreciate that because I was lost. Greg has the big brother to this, and he is leaps and bounds ahead of me on 3D printing. So he's going to be my go-to guy from now on. Also, my buddy Randy Richard mentioned, welcome to the world of frustration. And Randy, you are so right, my friend. So I get the 110 power cord, and I have no idea where to start. But the printer did come with a thumb drive and a micro SD card. So I take this inside, pop it in my computer, and there you have it. Uh, instructions, software, the whole deal. So I load the software onto my personal computer inside, and it's got a program called Cura, C-U-R-A. And what Cura is, it's a slicing program for your models. So I'm taking baby steps through all this and I also wanted to mention instead of doing a full-blown review of the printer I'd like to walk you through the steps I took to get to printing my first part. So I get Cura all loaded, update it, and I open it up and I see this palette and I'm thinking oh man now what? Then I remember Greg telling me about Thingiverse. So I get Thingiverse all loaded, make a shortcut for it, open it up, sign in, make an account. And I'll tell you what, man, this opened up a whole new world of 3D printing. In this site, you have all kinds of 3D printing people that know their stuff, man. There's all kinds of groups, items, and you can share everything that is posted on their website they share these models that you see here right now so I thought it would be real easy just to take one of these models off of Thingiverse download it into Cura and print it without knowing or making any changes or anything so after doing that let me show you what I came up with so basically what you do is, this is a USB, you put that in your computer, you have a little micro SD card that holds all the information. Um, you download a model from Thingiverse, which I did, and I picked something simple, something that would fit onto the printer, something basically designed and made to improve the performance of the printer and then you take your uh, SD card and you put it in the CPU of the printer so then after that point you have your display here and you fire it up and it reads the card and it's got a whole bunch of stuff and then, then again I was lost again so basically I just started playing with the stuff in here. Finally I saw you know print from SD card. So I did just that. I loaded up. Uh, incidentally the printer did come with a uh, small portion of white PLA filament which I uh, loaded into the printer and basically printed this little piece that's a filament guide for the back of the printer here. As a matter of fact, I'm sorry, that's the first one I printed right there with the white filament. 
Took about 17 minutes, 18 minutes to print that. I'm thinking, man, this is way too easy. So then I download another model, and this is a little fan guard for the CPU here. It prints with no problem at all. And I'm thinking, man, this is easy. So then I thought I was like some kind of expert. Well, there's where I was very wrong, and here's where the frustration came in. I don't know if the filament that comes with the printer is some magic stuff, <laughs> but after I used up all the filament for these two parts, I had to buy more filament. So I bought two flavors. I picked up this roll of blue ABS and also this roll of black PLA. Now, the difference between the two is PLA is cornstarch and sugar cane, uh, prone to moisture, so you have to keep the stuff dry. And of course, ABS is just that ABS plastic. Each roll is about 20 bucks a piece. And what's nice is, uh, of course, I picked it up from Amazon. It was here the next day. What's nice is each roll of filament gives you base parameters for your nozzle heat and your bed heat settings. It gets you pretty close. I found that you will have to experiment for optimal results. The frustration started when I started printing with this ABS plastic. It's, it's harder to print than the PLA because it can't cool fast, crack real easy. The first couple parts I printed and I'll show you here. This is ABS plastic and they turned out pretty pretty nice for the first two times I print it with ABS. Bed heat was turned way up and nozzle temperature was turned way up. This is another fan guard I printed which I got off Thingiverse. So I was pretty happy with that. So far so good. So after printing those few little parts I thought I was ready to bite off something a little bigger and better and that's when things got interesting. So <laughs> I quickly realized, hey, I don't even have a 3D CAD program. So thanks to Autodesk and Fusion 360, it is free to hobby guys like myself. So then I had to load Fusion 360 and I had to start all over again. How do you use Fusion 360? Well, thank God there's a guy out there that does the best tutorial videos. His name is Lars Christensen. And I'll tell you what, I must have watched 10 hours of this guy's videos so far before I even opened up the program. So anyway, I get through the whole Autodesk Fusion 360, load the program, I register, I start playing around with it. I start following Lars videos so I'm feeling pretty good I think I'm gonna model up something so it's like okay what am I gonna make so you know I got my Northridge tool grinder 2x72 inch belt grinder here and I thought hey you know what maybe I'll make a pulley for it like I said that's when things got real interesting so after learning Fusion 360 the very 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 basics of it I thought this would be pretty easy to model up and actually it was you know I'd say a good five hours you know tinkering here and there fine-tuning stuff I was able to draw this up and what's nice about Fusion 360 is once you model something up you could basically turn it into a 3d drawing for a 3d printer after watching a couple of Lars videos on that I learned how to not only model something up but take it and put it into the 3D printer world. Basically saved it in my 3D project file and then I opened it up in Cura. So it opens up this model and then you can slice it. And what, what that means is you could change your nozzle temperature settings. You could change the infill, how thick your walls are. Well, I didn't realize all that until I printed this for the first time. First time I printed it, it took seven hours. 
Well, 3D printers print in little triangles, and it's not a solid piece. It's hollow. Well, not really hollow, but it's built up with some structure. So then I had to dive deeper into the slicing program to tighten things up and make it more solid. Also, like I'll show you here, this is PLA. Epic fail. Another one. Epic fail. This is ABS. Fail. More ABS. Another fail. So, after many, many hours of frustration and trial and error, I finally got to the point where this actually stuck and it started printing, so I let it go. Um, I pressed this bearing in it to show you how accurate you can actually get with a 3D printer. I mean, I, I made this opening one thou under the outside diameter of the bearing, and it pressed in there real nice, and I was pretty impressed with that. What I didn't like was on the bottom side, it left some of this furry stuff, which is most likely my fault not knowing how to lay down the base layer because it, it printed from this side, the bottom side, up. Let me show you some clips of the 3D modeling that I learned how to do here just recently and share that with you. Here I'm opening up Autodesk Fusion 360 on my PC. You see my drawn up model there on the left. I opened it up. I'm showing you some of the features, fillets, recesses, and then I'm going to th show you 3D bottom side. And now I have to convert it to a uh, 3D layer drawing for the 3D printer. So now we convert it to the layers and you're going to see the mesh here. And now we're going to save it as that type of file. And it's recommended that you save it both in a file and then copy it over to your thumb drive. So here I'm saving it as both a 3D file and as a hard file in my folder. So now we're going into Cura, the slicing program. I'm going to go into my folder. I'm going to open it up. And now we can look at it as a 3D drawing there. Here I'm opening up the layer view so you can see the actual slicing and how it's going to print in real time. Now you see in the bottom right, I could save it right to a thumb drive as an STL file. It's not recommended. It's recommended that you save it in a folder, then move it to a thumb drive. So now I'm saving it here. That's in my folder as an STL file now that's been sliced. So it's got a different file name as you can see. So now I'm going to move that to the thumb drive. I could have also, like I said earlier, moved it right to the thumb drive. I then pop the micro SD card into the CPU of the printer and voila, printing begins. Along with a little trial and error, my prints started turning out and I'm sure in time they're just going to get better and better. So this will conclude part two. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for part three.